Hello everyone, welcome to Pipeline Tutor. When it comes to uh, pipeline road crossing design, I believe most of the engineers and designers uh, choose to follow API RP 1102 to guide their design. But API 1102 has its own limitations. For example, the maximum vehicle loading in API 1102 is only H20 loading. And also, if you have very shallow road crossing depth or we have very deep road crossing depth, uh, sometimes you can't find the right factors in API 11. Now we have a developer tool to help you to uh, conduct your pipeline crossing design when your design conditions exceed or not suitable for API 11 2 conditions. This tool was uh, developed using equations and methods uh, containing a report published by Canadian Energy Pipeline Association. Uh, if you would like to know more details, you can go to uh, um, Canadian Energy Pipeline Association website to find this report. Next, as usual, let's use uh, an example to show you how to use this great tool. Let's say we have a pipeline, a new pipeline is gonna build on this mining site. It has to cross a mining haul road. And this pipe, is uh, let's say 36 inch is a fairly big pipe uh, 36 inch and we want let's say the line pipe is actually only a quarter quarter inch wall thickness but uh, we don't have that here um, because this is this is for the typical value so let's go through the custom so we can manually um, put in the pipe OD and the wall thickness let's say to five and uh, for the pipe grade uh, let's say it's x60 pipe uh, all you need to do is select from the drop down and the maximum allowable operating pressure let's just generically say 1000 psi and for temperature differential this is the temperature uh, delta t basically between your pipe installation temperature and or your and any maximum uh, design pressure or minimal uh, design te temperature. You know, this data might not always be available, especially if it's a, you are evaluating an existing pipeline. Uh, what do we suggest that we can go assume a very conservative number? Uh, you definitely don't want to assume it's less than 50 Fahrenheit. Let's say in this case, assume it's 80 Fahrenheit. This is very conservative. Uh, you will have uh, a lot of thermal stress. And coming on this section, you will have some soil parameters, uh, like a dry unit weight of the soil. If you know it, you can put it in. If you don't, assume 120 pound per uh, cubic feet. The battery depth, I say in this case is a four foot. Uh, pipe bedding angle, let's, let's assume 30 is a typical value, or if you know, you can actually select from here. So in this case, let's keep it 30 degree. Uh, road type, let's say this whole road doesn't have a pavement uh, and it's designed for slow moving equipment, which is those uh, large um, hauling truck as a slow equipment on flexible pa pavements. Uh, type of a soil, let's assume coarse green soil with fines uh, to assume this is going to be we use for the road. And for the compaction, let's, uh, let's assume uh, 90%. Okay, great. So. Now we have the pipe data and the soil data, put it in, basically the road data. Uh, the next input is very important is about the vehicle configuration. So there's a two kinds of vehicles we, uh, we can choose from this section. Uh, we basically trying to make a user interface like easier for everyone to put in the data. Let's say uh, we pick a vehicle. Let's say we talk to the road, the design team, and they're saying the biggest the trucks that ever gonna drive on this whole road is 777G. And we find this uh, truck specifications from the manufacturer website, and we go to the, uh, the model numbers that uh, the mine said has purchased, so assumes X body, 77G, flat floors, and uh, let's, look at the load first. Uh, so there's no minimum payload, maximum working payload, not to exceed the maximum gross machine weight. Uh, to be conservative, let's use the maximum gross uh, machine weight 
as the design guide. I say, as you can see, that all this weight is around 400,000 pounds. Okay, after getting the total weight of this truck, uh, the next critical information is how the load is going to be distributed um, through different wheels. So, as we can see here, it shows there's a two XLs in this vehicle, and when it's loaded, about one third of the weight is going to be loaded in the front XL, and about two thirds is going to be loaded on the rear side. Okay, with that information, now let's take a look at this. So, uh, of course, it's going to be two XL, four wheels uh, configuration. And to, for information, then to put the axle load one and axle load two uh, or the separation, let's click here, just click um, this area. And then you have a new window pop up. And this is where you put all the loads. Uh, so let's say the XL load one, which is the front XL load, as we can see, is one third of 400,000 pounds. So this is roughly is 133, uh, 333. And uh, for, for the, the real side uh, is double of that, roughly 266. 1,666 pounds. So in total, that's roughly uh, 400,000. Let's say so. That's roughly uh, 400,000 pounds. And then, once we get the load uh, input in the tool, the next critical information is the dimension of how this will uh, distribute it around. And that we need to go to uh, the truck dimension um, area to find it. So we have X body, and the first thing, uh, data we need is between the front and the rear XL dimension, which is number five in here. For wheel base, we're talking about 15 foot. Okay, now we come back to this tool and we can change the XL separation to 15 foot, okay? Then the last dimension we need is the distance between the two wheels. Of course, they have two dimensions for the, the, the front wheel uh, separation distance and, and the real side is slightly different. So because we have more weight on the real side, let's use the distance for the real side. So in this case, it's gonna be 20. So let's go to 20, real dual tire width. Uh, for X body, we are talking about 11.7 foot. Same thing, we come back to, to the tool, click here again, and we can put 11.7 foot for the XO width. Okay, that's basically all in inputs we need. Uh, for this calculation, you can see that the reference data is already plotted on the left-hand side by the tool itself. The soil load is, is, is pretty minimal. It's only 3.3 because the depth is very shallow. It's only 4 foot. But the life load on pipe is very significant. It's 7.4 psi on the pipe. And all the uh, momentum parameter, deflection parameter, and modulus of soil reactions, um, you know, it's all based on the soil data you put it in earlier. The impact factor in this case is 1.25. Of course, you can manually override this by tick here to make it 1.5 to be most conservative or one if you don't want to be so uh, conservative. In this case, let's keep the D default setting here. And the next section is about, about the calculation results. You can see what you have all kinds of load and stress calculated based on the screening uh, uh, process published in this report. And uh, what do you want to pay attention is the last section. So you check two things, you check the fatigue. Basically, this is the same thing as API 1102. Uh, and also for the stress check, this is more of a code compliance um, um, section. So. Uh, one, one thing to point it out that you can actually change the allow allowables. This allowable is actually based on ASME uh, 31.4. Uh, 
uh, if you follow other standards, you probably can change the allowables. Just simply, um, simply overwrite here. Let's say you want to use 100 as allowable for combined stress. So all you need to do is to overwrite here. But in this case, it still fails because the results in terms of the percentage of spice is way over one. Okay, so we have some fails here. Apparently, um, that's not going to work. And the next step is to change the design inputs to make sure everything pass here. Um, that depends on what's your real scenario. Are, are you making a pipeline across existing road or are you building a road on top of a pipeline? So in, in this case, in this example, uh, we're saying that we're building a new pipeline to cross this road. And because there's a failing here, and then the first thing, probably the easiest solution we can do here is to change the pipe um, parameter. Let's say we, you know, we can change the pipe LD, but let's say we use a thicker wall here. Let's change it to 0.5. And we scroll down here to see if everything's good. Look, everything's great. Everything all of a sudden magically uh, is below allowables now. So in this case, let's say we still want to keep 90. Do you follow the ask me standards? Keep 90. And uh, basically means your pipeline at a 0.5 wall thickness is safe to cross this row. So now the design is complete and you want to save the results, uh, then what you can do is to generate a PDF report through this button here. Uh, you can put your project information, days revision, and who develop it, who check it, who approves it. As in this case, let's just uh, take a look at it directly. So this will show all the results you put it in, your design, input, reference data, outputs, and to verify that everything gonna pass, of course, you will have your vehicle configuration presented here. Another great feature of our calculation tool is that you can actually switch to metric units fairly easily. So let's say you work outside of the US and you want to, you, you prefer metric units. All you need to do is go to the, the top and you click metric. And by doing that, everything should convert to metric automatically, or you can start working on the design from the very beginning using metric. All you need to do is simply click on it and everything should be converted by itself. Um, of, and of course, in this case, if you generate a report uh, and the metrics units and the PDF report will convert to um, metric units as well. Okay, that's everything about this great tool. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations or suggestions or things that you think we can improve, feel, feel free to visit our website and leave us a message. And our web website is www.pipeeng.com. And thank you.